Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, it was only four years ago that the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the original Raspberry Pi Model B, an absolutely revolutionary product. It was a small, single board computer that could run Linux. You've got things like a desktop, compilers, Java, C, Python. You could run an internet browser. You had a set of GPIO pins, general purpose input output pins, that you could connect to sensors. You could control robots. You could light up lights. And it was only 35, 25 or 35 dollars, depending on which model you picked. Absolutely started a whole new revolution. Then after that came the Raspberry Pi 2. Same form factor, the same compatibility, the same general design, but this time with a quad core processor, but still sticking at that 35 dollar price point. And then for a while, the Raspberry Pi Foundation took things in a different direction. They lowered the price and we have the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now that was a tiny, tiny little board using the same processor as the original Raspberry Pi, but only cost $5. But now the latest thing is that the Raspberry Pi Foundation have released the Raspberry Pi 3. And what's different about this one? This one has got a 64-bit quad core processor on it, and it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So let's take a deeper look at it. Now, when it comes to the design of the Raspberry Pi, there's no getting away from it. You're just buying a circuit board. And actually, that's the intention. Now, you can buy some third-party cases. You can even buy some, case, some official cases from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. However, at the end of the day, what you buy is a circuit board, but a circuit board that can do a whole bunch of things. So let's have a look around the board. So looking around the board, towards the bottom, you'll find the HDMI port, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and the micro USB port, which is used to power the board. Then to the right hand side, you'll find the USB ports, there's four of those, and the ethernet port. And along the top, you'll find the GPIO pins, that's the general purpose input output pins, which allow you to connect the Raspberry Pi to a whole variety of different things, including sensors and motors and so on. Now the real star attraction on the Raspberry Pi 3 is the new 64-bit Cortex-A53 processor from Broadcom that also includes the video core GPU. The original Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi Zero both use a single core uh, ARM V6 processor from Broadcom along with the uh, video core GPU. The uh, Raspberry Pi 2 uses a quad-core Cortex-A7 CPU, also from Broadcom, using the same GPU. And now the Raspberry Pi 3 uses the 64-bit ARM V8 architecture, this time the Cortex-A53 chip, again with the same GPU. So we've gone from ARM V6 to ARM V7 32-bit, up to ARM V8 64-bit in just four years, and the pricing has remained the same, just $35. Absolutely fantastic. So now looking at the hardware, why is this the Raspberry Pi 3 rather than say a Raspberry Pi 2 Plus? Well first of all of course we've got the new processor, the change from a Cortex-A7 processor which was 32 bits to the Cortex-A53 processor which is 64 bits. But also you have now built-in Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth. Now the buzzword for 2015 and it looks like for 2016 is the Internet of Things, IoT. Now the addition of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi makes this an excellent prototyping board, an excellent development board for IoT. So what about software? Well, the operating system of choice for the Raspberry Pi 3 is Linux. However, it isn't the only operating system available. You can also run Windows 10 IoT Core and you can run RISCOS. Now, when it comes to Linux, there are a plethora of different distributions available that you can run on your Raspberry Pi. However, there is an official one called Raspbian, which is supported by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and installing it really is a breeze. You just download the .zip file from the Raspberry Pi website, you extract its contents onto an SD card, and then you boot your Pi with the SD card, following a few more on-screen instructions, and everything will be installed. Now, with all this talk of 64-bit processors, you might think that the version of Linux that comes with the Raspberry Pi 3 is in fact a 64-bit version. Well, unfortunately, it isn't. At the moment, all of the major Linux distributions for the Raspberry Pi 3 are still 32-bit. However, I'm sure that's going to change in the future. Now, when it comes to performance, the Raspberry Pi 3 is faster than the Raspberry Pi 2. No small part because the new CPU is clocked at 1.2 GHz compared to 900 MHz of the Raspberry Pi 2. Now I did some testing using the speed 
uh, benchmark of open SSL, and my figures show that the Raspberry Pi 3 is around 35 to 40 percent faster than the Raspberry Pi 2. As for real-world desktop performance, the Raspberry Pi 3 has certainly nudged the Pi a step closer to becoming a true desktop alternative. Loading a web page like AndroidAuthority.com is about 50% slower on the Raspberry Pi when compared to a modern desktop computer. Launching a program like LibreOffice Writer is around three times slower. However, at the moment, the, the idea of the Raspberry Pi 3 isn't to replace a desktop. It is a tool for hobbyists and educators. And as such, the performance is excellent. Linux comes pre-installed with tools like Python 3, Wolfram Mathematica, there are Office suites like LibreOffice, and you get access to C, C++, Golang, and Java compilers. Unlike the Pi 1 and the Pi 0, which really had to be used from the command line if you wanted to keep your sanity, the Pi 3 is a pleasure to use from the desktop. As well as the standard desktop distributions, there are also some specialist Linux distributions available for the Raspberry Pi 3. And that includes OSMC, the Open Source Media Center, which is basically a version of Linux that allows you to boot straight up into the Kodi Media Player. Now to test this, I connected up an external hard drive to my Raspberry Pi, I booted up into Kodi, and then I was easily able to find the files and play the video. My test video was a high bit rate full HD video that came straight out of Premiere Pro and it was able to be played on the Raspberry Pi without any trouble whatsoever. So my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Raspberry Pi 3. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please use the comments below. Tell me what you think about the Pi 3. Do you have a Pi 2 or a Pi 0 and you're going to get yourself a Pi 3? Let us know and tell us what you think. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and social media. And also, if you use this link here, you can find me on the Android Authority forums. There's a place where you can ask me questions about the Raspberry Pi 3 and about any of the other videos that I've done. And if I know the answer, I'll try to help you as much as I can. Also, don't forget to stay tuned to AndroidAuthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.